Viewers and subscribers, welcome to another episode of In A Week. I'm your host, Sahim. In this episode, I'm going to do a trip report on my trip to Montreal that I took on September 4 up until September 8, 2024. And I want to discuss with you guys what I did differently this time on my trip. So now let's get into the details. So one of the things that I did different in this trip is to take a Greyhound bus instead of taking the Amtrak train. The reason I take the Amtrak train normally on my trips to Montreal from New York City is because the seat of the Amtrak trains are very wide and then there's a lot of leg room between the two seats which provide the passenger a comfort. But the problem with taking the Amtrak train is that it takes a lot of time to arrive from New York to Montreal, almost about 12 to 13 hours, which is a very long journey because it's so slow. And uh, the other issue is that the train only runs at once a day, which is basically around eight or nine in the morning. And then when it arrives in Montreal, it's almost like eight or 8.30ish. So you lose the entire day. Basically, if you have a schedule to arrive uh, in Montreal and you have a hotel and you can check into your hotel around two or one o'clock in the afternoon, you're basically losing almost seven hours of the day uh, because you are stuck in the train which will arrive when its speed will allow it to arrive in your destination. So the bus was good in that way because Greyhound is, has a bus at uh, midnight. So I took a bus on September 4th midnight, which arrived at eight in the morning to Montreal. And uh, the problem is that the seats in the bus are very congested. So there's always a give and take between the two. You are either taking the speed or, you know, white seats in the train. And this time I chose to go with saving my time instead of, you know, the wide width of the seats and the convenience of just sitting and relaxing while you are moving slowly in the train. And um, luckily I fell in bu uh, asleep in the bus, so I was able to uh, kind of, you know, wake up in the morning and uh, felt that I have a good sleep. Uh, which is not surprising because I left to the bus in New York City immediately from my work. So I was super tired from my work to begin with. So when I arrived in the bus uh, station and just, you know, waited for the bus, I was extremely tired enough to fall asleep in the bus. And that's the reason why I woke up fresh the next morning. The problem is that when you arrive early at about eight in the morning, the hotel doesn't allow you to check in up until around 3 or 2 p.m. And the convenience is that you can check in your bags, but you know, when you're taking a road trip for you know at least eight hours or 10 hours long, you're getting very smelly, exhausted, and you need to shower and change clothes. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to do that. And it feels kind of stinky because if you arrive early, and you have no way to kind of go and you know take a shower, freshen up yourself. Uh, that doesn't feel really good. So um, hotel did, and I always stay in hotel zero one. I've said this earlier in my other videos. If you've been following my channel, you know about that. Hotel zero one is the hotel, my favorite hotel to stay. Um, and they, you know, knew I went over there and I said this is possible to kind of have the room checked in earlier. And they said, well, no, you will get your room at least by 3 p.m. And if not, then the we can let you know if it is ready earlier. Um, luckily, they, you know, got ready at 2 p.m. But still from 8 to 2, I was just, you know, roaming around in the city in my own smell of the journey and uh, that didn't feel really good but it's not uh, in any way hotel's fault uh, i'm just telling uh, you know in terms of um, planning out your trip that's one of the things you would have to go through if you do the things the way i did so the cost difference between greyhound and amtrak is not really a lot lot when it comes to ticket pricing between new york city and montreal return with a return ticket uh, it was $160 almost uh, approximately for both bus and the train. The give and take that I would like to explain is that you have more comfortable seats in the train. However, you only have the ability to travel once because the train doesn't go more than once in a day to Montreal from New York City and it's extremely slow. Whereas bus, you can you know go to any scheduled bus uh, and you can save your day. 
So I went this time with the Greyhound bus and that's why um, the situation that I'm discussing. Am I gonna do this again? Mm, probably, but I think if the ticket prices of airplanes are cheaper, I might look into it as well because uh, sometimes it doesn't pay to kind of spend $160 and maybe it's a good thing to just you know spend 100 or 200 more bucks and just to take a plane and then arrive within an hour or two to Montreal. Now, I would also like to explain to you guys what I noticed in Montreal this time. So it was Wednesday, September 4th was Wednesday. And uh, as I was walking around in Montreal in the evening, I noticed that there were so many people out on the streets and this is something that I love about Montreal that how vibrant it is how you know vibrant nightlife it has in comparison to other Canadian cities that it has you know a more laid-back vibe in terms of comparing to New York City but at the same time it's not like it's a dead town or something it's actually on the opposite very lively some things that are really very stand out for Montreal is that it has a lot of free concerts, especially, you know, during the summertime, during the wintertime, there are parks that where people are playing music and they're dancing. As you can see in the video over here, that it was shocking to me that it was a Wednesday night, but it felt like the people were already in the mood that it's been as if it's like a Friday night or something. It was a Wednesday night, so you still have to go, you know, Thursday and then Friday. But this is, uh, you know, for me, it was like, wow, the city is lively. It knows how to live and they're celebrating the arrival of the new weekend prior to two days of the actual weekend itself. So this is something that I want to bring into viewers' attention that I really love this about Montreal. Normally, I do not take public transportation. I like to walk around and explore different neighborhoods in the cities where they are very walkable, you know? So Montreal is a very walkable city and I love the fact that I can walk everywhere in Montreal. I don't have to take a train, I don't have to take a bus. But in this trip, I did something different. I actually took more train transportation this time. And the reason why I did that is because even though I have explored all the neighborhoods on foot in the city center, I wanted to explore the neighborhoods that are farther away from the city center because I had never been into those neighborhoods. I wanted to figure out exactly what's going on. What is it that I am personally missing from experiencing life in Montreal? And this time around, I actually went to a lot of different neighborhoods, but um, I would not like to bring the neighborhoods that I did not like as opposed to I would like to bring to my viewers attention the neighborhoods that I did like. And uh, I will talk about it in my next uh, comment. But in terms of going around the city, I actually purchased this Opus card from the train station in Saint Laurent. And uh, I loaded a three day unlimited pass on this Opus card. So the thing is that I really felt that since I'm visiting Montreal more frequently, I should have an Opus card and it's a rechargeable card. You can put any different kind of uh, passes on it or you know just pay as you go if you want to just uh, load up the money and you can do it online so it's very convenient in that way on my next trip i don't have to you know go to the machine and you know load up the money or buy individual day passes or something like that i can just load whatever i need in my opus card so in this trip i explored different neighborhoods and I came across saint Henri. I actually checked it up on Google Maps and I thought, you know what, I have never been to uh, saint Henri or St. Henry in English and uh, let's find out what saint Henri or St. Henry has to offer. And it's a very, very nice neighborhood. I would say that um, if someone has to explore a little bit late, more laid back uh, environment in Montreal, but cleaner, nicer, and uh, also not at the same time, not, uh, you know, dead. It has like its cafes, it, it's, it's very vibrant at the same time, not as much as the city center, but it has its own charm. Uh, I actually went to uh, this park, Sir George Etienne uh, Cartier Park, and Sir George Etienne Cartier Park was very, uh, clean and nice and you could see in the video that the people were sitting over there enjoying picnics 
and uh, I really loved these uh, sprays of water that they had in the park for people. It was not very hot on that day, but it still it feels really good to go in the water spray within the park. And I imagine that during a hot summer day it would actually be more refreshing to be sprayed by that water uh, in the park. And uh, I would explore this neighborhood more. Uh, in this trip, I just wanted to get kind of a glimpse of different neighborhoods. Uh, it was four day trip, so I didn't get a chance to explore Saint Henri or Saint Henry in you know, very much in detail. I didn't walk too much around it, but wherever I went, I saw the potential that yes, this is some place I would like to come back again and I would like to explore more on my next trip. Another thing that I have never done in this trip, I actually did that, was to ride a bicycle in Montreal. And uh, I was looking for locations because I'm always afraid to bike in the city center because I'm not really aware about how the street traffic is and uh, what are the different nuances I need to take uh, into account before I can decide to take a bike ride in another city but uh, to be fair Montreal has an excellent uh, transportation system for the bicyclists and the bicycle routes are really protected as opposed to what I have seen in New York City so I felt a little more confident but still I want to take it a little more you know cautionary kind of uh, attitude and go to a place and ride a bike where the traffic is not crazy you're not actually in the main streets with the car traffic and to do that I went to Atwater in Montreal so Atwater is actually close to the Charlevoix station and uh, it is uh, basically a neighborhood that is next to Lachine Canal so if you want to enjoy nature and a laid-back neighborhood on a bicycle ride you can do that in Atwater and there is a bike rental in uh, that area which is called Ma Bicyclette and they let you rent the bikes on you know depending upon how long you want to rent out the bike and it depends upon how much time you were actually away when you got the bike. Uh, so I spent an hour and I came back to the location where I rented the bicycle within an hour. So they only charged me 15 Canadian dollars for an hour, but it could uh, go up depending upon when you return. Uh, in order to rent a bicycle, it's very easy. Um, if you are going during the weekdays, it might be even uh, easier to rent a bicycle over there. Uh, which was easier for me because I went over there on a Friday and uh, it was just you know they ask you for your ID and uh, a little form that you fill out and they ask you what kind of bike you want and for me it was like a medium to small so I got a medium bike which was very good and uh, I went biking next to the Lachine Canal and it was wonderful and you can see that in the video how nice and clean and was very safe uh, the only traffic you would see over there is other bicycles or a foot traffic. You just have to be careful with the people who are on foot. Uh, but there were no cars, there were no, you know, uh, motorbikes or anything like that, which unfortunately in New York City is the case because even though I ride my bicycle in uh, my neighborhood and uh, the bike path that I go to is segregated from the car traffic, but you still see the uh, gas powered uh, motorbikes and you know electric you know bikes and all of that in the regular bike and pedestrian traffic areas uh, which is very dangerous for people who are either on foot or riding a you know regular bicycle so very very nice bike ride like next to the Lachine Canal and uh, I would do that again and it's a nice area as well like you know there is a very good vibe you know it's very lively people were walking around over there so definitely one of the things that i can advise to do is to basically go early in the morning maybe around 10 ish or something so that you were able to rent out a bike i did notice that they prefer that you do it online but if you arrive in person it really depends if they have a bicycle for you or not if they don't unfortunately you would lose your trip 
um, and you may not be able to you know rent a bike over there this is of course if you are a visitor over there and you have no bicycle of your own people who are living in montreal of course they can take their own bikes if they own it and they can take that anytime to this bike path but yes i really loved it i enjoyed it and i would do it again uh, i think the other thing that i would do is basically to take a little more bolder step and uh, next trip i would like to bike in the city center especially on Mont Royal uh, Avenue Mont Royal or Mont Royal Avenue and uh, to kind of experience what it's like to ride a bike within the city center in Montreal. So now let's come to the topic of food and unfortunately on my last trip I found out that my favorite poutine item on Frita Lore's menu which was poutine a la bouche which is a beef based poutine is now replaced by some new items on Frita Lore's menu and uh, Items like uh, tandoori chicken poutine has been introduced, which is a new item on Frita Lore's menu. And I tried it. Unfortunately, it didn't do the same thing for me as poutine a la bouche did. I also tried Tex-Mex uh, poutine on Frita Lore's menu, but that didn't do it for me either. So on my next trip, I would be heading to La Banquise, which is another poutinerie that I really like in Montreal. They still have the poutine that I really like on their menu. So uh, I would not be going to Frita Lore unless they bring back a la bouche. Uh, it's just that I felt so much uh, connection with that uh, item on their menu that if it's not there, the other items didn't do it for me and I would be heading to La Banquise so next time. <laughs> So overall it was a really nice trip and there are aspects of this uh, trip planning that I would keep for my next trip to Montreal like uh, going to Montreal in uh, the month of September for 2025 I would continue to do the same and uh, also to go after the Labor Day when the prices have come down and everybody has come back to work from their holiday and uh, I would like to stay in Montreal a little longer because I realized on my last trip that there are neighborhoods that I really like to explore more and because of the shortage of time I was not able to do that uh, more in depth as I would like to. So maybe next time I would take a six day uh, trip to Montreal from New York City. The other aspect that I would probably change is the mode of transportation. I think I would take a plane instead of a bus or a train because it does take a long time even in a bus. If, even if you're traveling you know in the midnight and arriving early in the morning it does take a toll on your sleep and uh, it is uncomfortable. And at the same time the flight is only about hour and a half or two hours long between New York City and Montreal and I can schedule a flight that would arrive uh, and uh, coincide with my check in time in the hotel because I really didn't like the fact that I had to walk around you know feeling all disgusted because you know you're taking a bus ride in the uh, night time you have to brush your teeth you have to shower to make you know make yourself smell good when you're walking around so I didn't like the fact that I have to wait until 2 p.m to check into my room uh, which is as I said before not the fault of a hotel it's just that the logistics are such that when I arrive the hotel as this as the hotel said that you are allowed check in around 3 p.m. Um, which is uh, you know because of the niceness of the hotel staff they when I arrived I mentioned this that I would like to get the room as early as possible it was still until 2 p.m. but out of their niceness they you know said to me that they're going to let me know and they let me check in at 2 p.m uh, but uh, in terms of logistics for myself in terms of planning them out next time i think the flight would be much more uh convenient and also at the same time you know logistically it will make sense because when i will arrive i would not be first of all stinky and tired i would at the same time when i will arrive i would be able to check into the hotel if you like the content please subscribe like the video and comment below help the channel grow thank you for watching in a week